Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Soul Pet. Uh, this is not a live stream. This is a recorded video, but it's for my live stream audience in addition to whoever else may be watching. Uh, and I'll explain that in just a second. But welcome to Soul Pet. This is the channel that is dedicated to helping people heal after the loss of an animal companion. And we do it in all kinds of ways. We talk about all kinds of spiritual things. We talk about different ways to help us heal. But more than anything, we've created a community of people who have loved our animal companions so much and when they've crossed to the other side have found comfort from each other and healing from each other and support from each other. Um, so I, I have some fun things to share today. For those of you who normally join me on my live stream on Monday, you know that this past Monday, which was what, October 22nd, 2024, because who knows when you're going to watch this video, right? Um, I was unable to do the live stream for the first time all year. It was my first miss uh, in a year since I started this the very first week of January. And have you ever felt like, have you ever felt like your life is on fast forward and you just want to be able to hit the pause button for a moment? Well, for me, September and October has been that fast forward time and it's okay. It, it's all okay. I know that this all kind of will smooth out. Everything will be fine, but it really has, um, it's really kept me on my toes and I'll do a little bit of explaining and then I'll also explain why I'm holding a little baby sock here. So it does feel like my life has been on fast forward. I enjoy doing live streams. I love the Monday live streams because we have a lot of interaction. Um, and, and so I'm going to keep this in that same format. I feel like if I, when I just talk and express myself, um, that sometimes the message comes through even more than, than when I have notes. And uh, although you guys know I do automatic writing, so I've got some notes. Okay, so my life is on fast forward. And what does that mean? So some of you know this, a lot of you, especially the live stream audience knows that uh, my beautiful mother-in-law in September suffered a stroke and uh, about 10 days later, she made her transition to the other side uh, where she's now with Kitty Kitty and all of my beautiful dogs and all of our beautiful animals. Um, she was very much a cat person, uh, loved her cats. In fact, Prince Charming is her kitty cat now who we are uh, helping adjust to the new state of normal. Um, so we had that go on. And, and, and of course, we're all over. We're, we live in different places. We're all in different states, families all over the place. And getting all that, um, taking care of all the all the practical details, in addition to all the emotional details, lots of heavy, intense emotional baggage, um, working through all those emotions from a human person perspective, um, and then also all the practical things that go along with that. And then my family, my closest family members, um, one of my children moved his family across the country, and with my granddaughter, that's where the baby sack comes in. So this may be a little bit of a vulnerable share. Um, but so I've been helping them move and I've been traveling back and forth between, which I'm now going to consider my new normal between Colorado and Wisconsin and um, going back and forth. And I just want to be able to, I want to, I'm making a personal conscious choice to maintain strong, beautiful relationships with my family members. It's very important to me. Family is super important to me. And I don't want to lose that connection no matter where in the world we happen to go. My joke was that if my kids decided they were going to move to Saskatchewan, I was going to have to find out how to become a Canadian citizen. Um, but close enough. I mean, Wisconsin for Pete's sake. Um, so anywho, as I am part of the emotional share about this is that I, I've been cleaning and, and I'm, I'm changing residences and I'm doing all kinds of things because I have got some really cool things planned for myself that I hope you guys will come along with me. Um, I'm going to, this is my normal little setup here. I love this little office space that I have in my room, um, but I'm thinking of taking this show on the road, like literally once a month, going somewhere new, interesting that I've never seen before, exploring different places. Um, but so as I'm packing things up and cleaning up, I came across this little sock and it made me just start, I just started to cry. I was just crying and crying and crying over a silly little baby sock because I miss my granddaughter. You, you, you guys know this too, that every single, just about every single day since she's been born, we've been, I've been with her because I was helping care for her. Um, I guess that started about March. So that wasn't true. Not every day, but, um, but then now, she, now she's in a different place and I don't have her with me every single day. So this little baby sock, just, I'm going to keep it now. <laughs> this is going to be my little reminder, of her smell it, feel it. So my beautiful granddaughter, I love you so much. Uh, okay. So what else did this make me realize? And this is going to get to you guys and how we can um, help ourselves with our healing process. 
I realized I've been trying to do a lot of things perfectly. Uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and sometimes I fall back into the trap of my old corporate self. For those of you who may be watching this for the very first time, or you haven't heard this message yet, uh, I'm a corporate dropout. So I, I spent 35 years in corporate America, total type A control freak, had to be in charge of everything. And, um, and then I discovered animals, and the animals like changed everything for me. I walked away from my corporate job so that I could focus on, I was a, I am an animal Reiki master, now an animal chaplain and also an animal medium. So I discovered through the process of Reiki that I was able to have these really deep connections with animals here with us in the physical and also animals that have crossed to the other side. And one of the things that they helped me do was, was release all that and let go of the need to control and to give in and to surrender and to enjoy and to explore and to have fun. They, my animal companions and all animals, honestly, wildlife, animals in captivity, uh, all animals have opened these doors for me. And I find myself every once in a while, though, falling back into the trap of my old habits. And that's what they really are, old habits. And when you are, this is now my, this is now my business, but I don't like the word business. This is my vocation. And sometimes I find myself in these places where I have to be in control doing this every single day. This is required. That is required. This must be done. Oh, you can even hear it in my voice. And so I love to be able to take a moment and relax and let go of the need for perfection. And I think that's part of the message that I want to share with you guys today too. What is it that, that you're doing that you can let go of? What is it that is keeping you stuck or, or holding you in a place that no longer serves you? And that, that includes the grief after the loss of an animal companion. Um, all right. So I'm just going to look at my notes real quick because I want to make sure, first of all, I have to say hello to my live stream audience because I missed you guys on Monday. I was traveling. I promised that I would make every attempt. I actually think I pretty much guaranteed that I would pull into a truck stop if I had to, to do my live stream on Monday. And I did that. I should have taken a little video of some kind. I pulled into a truck stop. Uh, you guys, it was impossible. There was no way. It's so loud, so noisy. Uh, the, my pickup truck was vibrating. Um, it was just so crazy there. So I did not do the live stream. I sent out a quick message that said, no live stream tonight. I'll make it up to you guys. So I am making it up this way, but I am not going to miss 52. 52 live streams this year. I'm going to figure out a way to squeeze that extra one in. Um, so hello to Sherry and Cheryl and oh God, I'm going to miss somebody. I'm, uh, I'm so, Donna and Jody and Kathy and Pat and Aaron and Sharon and, and Lauren. And <laughs> I know I'm going to forget somebody, all of you. I love you guys so much. And for those who are not watching the live streams, you should join us every Monday, just about every Monday. And we are, we come together and there's so much support and new people join. Uh, Anna, uh, there are new people who start to follow uh, I'm, I'm, as more names, Leslie, Jen, as, as more and more names come up, I'm going to just say them. We support each other and uh, you are all welcome to join. It's a very, very comfortable place where we really feel like family and we welcome new members into our family all the time. Um, so I got off the track there with the live stream, but I, oh yeah, because I wanted to say hello to you guys and let you know that I think about you guys all the time. And I see lots of comments. I try to reply to all the comments, but this week I'm really behind. So even comments on this video, I will get to them. I promise I will not disregard them. Um, and some of you have been sending me private messages to make sure that everything is okay. We are all wonderful, just operating at a little fast pace and it's time to slow down. So what are some of the things that I want to talk about today? I was thinking about what is really holding us back and what prevents, what, what kind of, what are the blocks to healing? What are the things that stop us from getting to that place where we feel, we can start to feel happy again and we cannot wake up every morning and feel the sadness and, and the density and the, those, I call them denser emotions. I try not to be judgmental. Um, I, I just call them denser emotions. Um, and I think some of the things that hold us back are something called limiting beliefs. Now, in the spiritual metaphysical world, we talk about in personal growth, personal development world, we talk about limiting beliefs all the time. They are things that are ingrained in us that just aren't true. And they are, but they're beliefs that we hold on to. And we believe since we believe they are true, we act in ways that um, make them true. Hang on a quick second here, guys. 
off camera for a sec. Uh, the, the little tears from the baby suck. Made me, made me have to blow my nose. And we're back. Okay. Uh, and this is why I love to do these things like live streams because I just like to be me. I got to be me. So limiting beliefs. First thing is when I first started to do this, I was, gosh, it's got to be, I was 52. So almost, almost a dozen years ago when I had my spiritual awakening, uh, that's when I realized that the things that I were doing were not in alignment with my true self. And I needed to take some steps to change. And of course the animals are the ones who opened all the doors for me. Uh, but I was, as I began to explore these things, I was told to do affirmations. Uh, like I am so happy and grateful that I am. And it, they just didn't ring true. Um, I'm so happy and grateful. Uh, act as if, uh, imagine that you are, feel from the end. And uh, okay, all of those things did not make any sense to me. And then when you're in a place, we're specifically related to you guys. So if you're in a place where you are experiencing the, the deepest grief of your life, we often feel the deep the, the grief deeper for our animal companions than we have for people. I, I get that. I totally get that. You don't have to feel guilty about that. People do ask me that all the time. Is it wrong that I'm grieving more for my cat or my dog than I did for a family member? No, it's not wrong. It's just, it, it's all about love. And it's all about the things that we felt for unconditional love. Our animals gave us unconditional love, no strings. And when they cross to the other side, it leaves a, a hole that is sometimes deeper than that of humans. So when we're feeling that grief and somebody tells you, well, just tell yourself every morning when you wake up that you're happy, you're happy today. Uh, tell yourself that you're letting go of the sadness. Uh, repeat these mantras, say these affirmations, say these incantations, act as if. Well, we're not there yet. It takes, there's a couple of steps, I think, ahead of time before it's like, um, I heard this analogy that right now with that grief, there's no place in your garden to plant new seeds. It's too full of all these other things. So how do we kind of, how do we kind of till the soil? How do we weed the garden? How do we, although I don't pull weeds anymore because I believe in plant consciousness too. But so using that analogy though, how do we make space in our garden for the new seeds? And it doesn't start with trying to plant more seeds on top of things that are already there in our garden. It just doesn't work that way. We need to make space. We need to clean out. So limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are things that you're telling yourself that are not true. Here are some of the things like for, for me recently, it's been that I've got to do everything right, that I've got to be perfect, that I've got to live up to a schedule. There are expectations, there are obligations, there are, okay, I, I'm, I'm choosing right now to let those go. It's why I jumped on this video because I'm like, I, I could just, I could just make a video and everything, it, it will help me uh, release as well as, um, as well as share things with you guys with my beautiful community that I love and I don't want to let down. So, but what are some of the things for that might be holding you back in terms of your grief and the loss of your animal companion? Number one, holding yourself personally responsible, saying it's my fault. I did this. I'm to blame. Limiting belief. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to share how we might get rid of those limiting beliefs in a minute. Limiting belief. Um, and then uh, that somebody else is responsible. There is somebody to blame. There's someone responsible. Somebody made a mistake. Somebody somebody purposely hurt my animal. Somebody accidentally hurt my animal. Somebody um, maliciously, somebody um, malpractice, what, whatever you, you're holding somebody else responsible. Somebody else is responsible for my, for my animal companions crossing. Um, then there's other things like uh, nobody's ever loved me as much as my animal companion. I will never feel love again, like I felt with my beautiful animal. Um, love always leaves me. Um, I can't forgive and forget. Uh, I may be able to get to a place of forgiveness, but I won't ever forget. Uh, and all of those things, they're not true. These are beliefs that we are holding within ourselves. Sometimes they're deeply programmed. Sometimes they go back to childhood. Uh, but they're regardless, they're beliefs that we can begin to shed, begin to weed the garden. Uh, and there's something that I was recently, I follow a guy, his name is, uh, and that's where I got the analogy. His name is David Baer, B-A-Y-E-R. I really like him because he takes a no-nonsense approach to personal growth and personal development and spiritual awakening. He's also, I think, it, much like me, he comes from a background where we are control freaks and then how to let that go. And so he's the one who actually shared the analogy of the garden. 
um, that your garden has no room to plant the seeds. But he also uses this thing called a, dis a decision matrix. Very corporate sounding, isn't it? <laughs> a decision matrix. Really, it is about letting go of limiting beliefs. And you have a belief, just take one. Think about what a limiting belief is that you have right now. One li limiting belief about your ability to heal after the loss of an animal companion. And then you set out during the day, instead of saying affirmations to yourself, look around you and find something that contradicts that belief. Find something that proves it wrong. So if you are, um, I'm an awful person. I'm an awful person because I, I did something. I didn't pay attention. I didn't pay attention enough to my animal companion and I missed something that I should have seen and so I'm a horrible person and I'm not worthy of love anymore. I'm not worthy of any, <laughs> making me a little emotional now saying the words, not worthy of an animal coming back into my life. I'm not worthy of healing. So look for one thing throughout the day or do one thing to prove yourself wrong. Do a kindness for someone. Think kind thoughts about someone or something. Do something, find something to help prove yourself wrong. Every single day, find something that proves your limiting belief wrong. Um, there are some, some that are going to be harder than others. The forgive and forget thing. We have been taught. I'm going to, I'm going to actually, this, I believe this. We have been taught that it's okay to forgive, but don't ever forget because you don't want to be stomped on again. That's not forgiveness. That is not forgiveness. Unconditional love requires unconditional forgiveness. So that may be one of the hardest limiting beliefs to get beyond is uh, I, I can forgive, but I can't forget. So I am going to encourage you just to find one small way every day. So what does that mean? How, how might you do that? Find something that you recall. It can be, I don't care how far, how long ago it was, something that you forgave, but you still are hanging on to. Um, it's a situation. It doesn't have to be anything big. I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. It's not coming to me. Um, somebody lost something dear to you or yeah, you lent a book out. There's a good one. You lent a book out. They never returned it and or they borrowed a tool or they borrowed something. You never got it back um, and you forgave them for that. It's all good, but you still remember it. You still remember it because you love that book or you remember that thing that you that you that you borrowed, lent out to somebody. Um, so just forgive. And forget, just you've forgiven it, It's forget it. it. It does not matter in the grand scheme. What our animals are trying to share with us is that in particular, petty things do not matter at all. They don't matter. So start with something small, know that you forgave it and now forget it. Just let it go. Uh, how do you let it go? Um, I like to, well, you guys know, I love to write. And things come through to me when I receive information from, from the field, from this beautiful field of information that flows to, through, and around us, this beautiful field of love. I love to take my beautiful big pen, extension of my higher self, and I like to write down. So I might take a piece of paper. I don't, I wasn't planning this, so I don't have any of my things right near me, but I might take a piece of paper and I write, I forgive, um, uh, I forgive Tony for never returning my uh, my my hedge trimmer. <laughs> then fold it up in a piece of paper and rip it up and throw it away. Or there's something called fly paper. I love fly paper. Fly paper is this really really small paper, and you would get like I have a shell across the room. You write, you write it down on the fly paper, then you light the fly paper with a little match and it, it just disintegrates. The whole thing just disintegrates into ash and you put it in your little, um, you put it, I have a little shell and then you can just discard it. So you, you can do that or you can just do it with your mind. Just say, I choose, I decide because decisions are choices. Beliefs are decisions. Um, I choose, I choose right now to forget it's not important to me anymore. And it feels so freeing. It just lets you feel free, free, free. It's like lifting this burden off your back. Um, it's gone. And then once it's gone, it, it doesn't come back. And if you find yourself recalling it, recall it with laughter. Recall it with, oh my gosh, I can't believe I held on to that for 12 years. I can't believe that for, that for the past five years, I've been still thinking about that book that I 
completely irrelevant. Our animals let us, they're the ones who teach us more than anything that those things we can easily let go. And once you start to let go of the easy things, then it becomes easier to let go of some of the more difficult things. Um, what's one of the more difficult things? Holding yourself responsible for your animal companions crossing. This is something that you can say to yourself. I did the best I could with what I had at that moment in time. Did I consciously choose to hurt my animal companion? I did not. Did I make a decision now that I keep second guessing? Yes. I keep second guessing whether or not I should have done that. Should, could have, would have, we should ourselves to death. Okay, so I think that I should have done something different, but I am willing to take the first step and recognize that I did the best I could with what I had at that moment in time. That's the beginning of letting go of those beliefs. It's the beginning of self-forgiveness. It's the beginning of unconditionally forgiving yourself. And here's the thing, we have got one extra tool on our side. That is our animal companion, our animal companion on the other side who has transitioned. The other side does not exist. When they transition out of their physical body, what is the separation between, like, has anybody ever measured? What is the difference in space? So is my animal companion, when they've left their body, have they gone over there? Have they gone up there? How, how far away from me actually are they? They're right here. They are right here. Their spirit, their soul, their essence, their presence, when it leaves their physical body, does not float off into the sky. It does not go into outer space. We like to think that they're in heaven, but their heaven is right here with us, right here in our hearts, right here in our minds, in our memories, in our feelings, in our grief. Our animal companions, believe it or not, they can read your mind. Your animal companion knows when you are asking for help and it's your secret weapon. It's your little Batman sign out to the sky that says, I need some help getting past this. I need some help with unconditional forgiveness of myself, of the vet, of my spouse, of my child, of my neighbor, of that wh whatever. And let them come into your heart and it's a secret weapon they can help you get to that place that you think you can't get to by yourself. Healing is not a, it's not a one man job. It's, it's why we have this community because we need and welcome and ask for the help of others as we find a way to work through this grief and to work above the grief and to rise above it. And when you can learn to let go of your own limiting beliefs and you can begin to forgive and forgiveness starts right here with me, with you, with, with each individual, then you'll start to see the change. You're, you won't even need to weed your garden because your garden will just expand. It will create the space where you can then plant the new seeds that say, I am worthy of love, that I am a good person, that I am surrounded by good people, that I am surrounded by animals of all kinds, every bird, every frog, every bumblebee, every squirrel, I'm surrounded by animals that love me for who I am and watch as everything begins to shift. The space in your garden opens up, your limiting beliefs float away. You have found the proof that you're worthy. And, and, and sometimes I don't even know where all these words come from <laughs> or, or where I'm going to go with them. Um, and, and the difference between soul, that really, the space between souls, that is really coming to, um, mean something to me right now. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to explore that more on, on the next live stream on Monday. Uh, am, am I going to be traveling again this Monday? I'll be in Texas, but I'll be there for the live stream. Uh, so we'll talk about that. What is, where is the space between souls? And is there no space between souls? That the souls of everybody, the souls of beautiful Nana on the other side, Kitty Kitty, Jeff, Lucy, all of your beautiful animals, who's coming to mind? Scout, Phoebe, um, all, all, Lucy, the other Lucy, all of your beautiful animals. I keep them with me in my heart all the time, by the way. I am so grateful for you sharing them with me. Um, and they are with me always. They make up the, I call them the animal collective because they have no better word. They have all become this beautiful one with no space 
they have become this beautiful animal soul, one beautiful soul that speaks to me and sings through me and speaks to you through, speaks to you through me, right? Um, these beautiful animals. So there is no space between souls. That's what I believe. There's no space between souls, but a topic for another day. Um, interesting. Thanks guys for, for bringing that to me. Um, all right. So that is what I think that I have for you for today. I will be back on Monday, October 28th. I think that's the date. I, I don't know, whatever it is um, with our next live stream. Otherwise, if there's, if you ever have, if you would like to have a, a little reading for your animal companion, I like to do these little, I call them mini readings where we just, I just try to make a connection on the live stream, share information with you. You send me their picture and a couple of questions that you would like me to ask to read for my pet, R-E-A-D, number four, M-E, read for my pet at gmail.com. And I will, uh, and I'll be happy to include you in that space. And if you would like a private reading, I post the links in the description to this video. I post links in the description on my like main channel. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to do all the YouTuber things. Like, please subscribe if this message resonates with you. Please share it 100%. Please share it. If you know anybody who would benefit from this kind of a community, um, please let them know. And until the next time that I see you guys, may animals light your way. Take care, everybody. Love you so much and sending you so much love from all of your animal companions on the other side of life. Take care.